So in this video, I'm going to be continuing about data structures now. The last video and the one before, we talked about more of the conceptual side of it, but now back to actual data structures. So in this video, I'm going to be introducing what's called a stack, a queue, and a deck. A deck, by the way, is short for double-ended Oops. Q. So we'll, we'll learn why it's called that when we learn about queues, but first I'll start, start with a stack. So a stack, essentially, a good way to think about it, or well, well first I'll explain it. So a stack is a last in first out, you'll be seeing this type of notation in class, so you should know it, last in first out data structure. It means the very last thing that was added to it is the first thing that's going to be taken out of it. So an example of that could be like just a generic Java program. A Java program that has methods that are called on within, that's essentially a stack. So let's say I wrote some program called foobar and I executed. So maybe, or I'll say some class foo. So I'm running class foo, and it's doing its thing. And then maybe class foo calls on some class. Let me do this a little lower. Oops. So let's say I call on some class foo. And then within that class foo, foo calls on some class bar. And then let's say bar calls on some class NEMA. So as you can see, when we when we execute foo, so foo gets added to our stack, and then as it's executing it does some stuff, bar is added to the stack, and then bar starts executing some stuff, and then NEMA is added to the stack because bar called on it. Now what happens when NEMA finishes? We pop it off, and then we're back to bat or uh, bar. Now let's say I will actually write something out, and then I'll work through it. So yeah, let's say we have some class foo. It calls on bar, and then Nima. And then let's say bar. Let's say Nima doesn't really call anything. Let's say just Nima does something on its own. But then bar also calls on Nima. Whatever. I mean, this is an actual syntax, but just to get the gist of it. So let's say I have some foo, and that calls on bar. Bar calls on Nima. And then after this finishes, foo calls on Nima. So how would this look like? I run Java space foo, and I start my foo program. So, yeah, as I said, it creates, so to, to kind of look at it, it's as if we're, so let's say this is our stack, it's right here. So, we would add this foo. Now foo starts, and then we hit bar. We push bar on, that's the term that we use, push bar starts, and then now, as we're running bar, Nima is called. So I'm going to push on Nima. Now let's say Nima finishes evaluating. So then I would pop Nima off. Uh, let me see if there's a good way to erase stuff. Oh, okay, that'll actually work. So now Nima gets popped off because Nima finished. So now bar continues. Let me erase that one too. Bar continues. Now let's say bar reaches its end. Now bar finishes. So then bar would get popped off as well. All right. I'll erase that. Now let's say before foo finishes, like I said, it has to call on Nemo one last time. So then now I'm going to push 
NEMA. And then NEMA evaluates, and then when I'm done, I pop it off. And then, so I pop it off. And then now, foo continues, and then foo finishes, and at the very end, I pop that off too. So then at the end of my program, I've evaluated everything, and then so by the end of it, my stack is completely empty. That, I guess that's kind of like an abstract way of thinking about it, but that's essentially what a stack is. is the last thing that you add to it is the first thing that gets removed. It's the first thing that gets evaluated. So on its own, it might be a little more confusing to understand it, so I'll compare it to Q now that we're done with the stack, and then it'll make a little more sense. So a Q it's called a FIFO, a first in, first out data structure. So the first element that gets added in is the first one to come out. The best example to think of for this is just pretty much a grocery store line, or just any type of line that you're in the line, and then you wait for it to finish, and then it's your turn, and then it, it evaluates in the order that people are added to it. Another good way to think about it is like a print queue. Notice how it's called a print queue. So the first thing that gets sent to the printer is the first thing that gets printed. Things can add up, but they finish one by one in the order they were added. So let's say my queue, I'm writing like a grocery store app or something like that. Let's say the first person to enter the queue is Bob. Now let's say while Bob is being helped, Phil gets added behind him. So Bob got added, then Phil got added. And then Jim got added. So now, finally, by this time, Bob finishes. He gets popped off the end of the queue. Because now he's been served. Now Phil's at the front of the line. Now Phil's getting, you know, Phil, he's talking to the cashier. And while he's still finishing up, let's say Bill gets added to the queue. And then now, let's say it's the end of the shift, so the grocery store is not accepting any more people. So Bill is the end of the line. So now if Bill gets evaluated, he gets popped off. Jim, finally the, the cashier finishes ringing up Jim. Jim pops off. And then now, the last person in line, Bill. Now the cashier is working with Bill. Bill's job gets finished, Bill gets popped off, and then our queue is empty. So hopefully that makes a little more sense than the stack. Essentially, yeah, just think of, you know, a grocery store line. The order that people are added to the end of it, they're removed from the front of it in that same order. So that, that's pretty much that. Now to go on to double-ended queues or decks, as they're called. So a deck. So a deck is essentially a more general form of a queue and a stack kind of combined. It's a double-ended queue. So what that means is you can add to either side and you can remove from either side. So maybe I add build, so let's say this is my front. And let's say this side is my back. So maybe, actually, let me move Phil a little further over. I'll start somewhere in the middle, so I have room. I'll do that in one. So let's say I add Phil to the front. Now let's say I do an add back, and I add Tim. Let's say I add to the back again, and I add Meg. Now let's say I add Mary to the front. So as you can see, we can, oh, and then let's say I do a remove back. So who gets removed? 
Meg would get removed because she's currently at the back of my double ended queue. Now what if I do another remove back? Okay, Tim is in the back of my queue, my double ended queue, so Tim would get removed. And then what if I do a remove front? Well Mary's at the front, Mary would get removed. Now what if I do an, a remove front or a remove back? Well Phil is at the front and he's at the back, so then Phil would be next. So I hope that kind of makes sense. I kind of ran through it a little bit fast, but that, I mean that's basically the gist of it. Is it's just some data structure that we can add to the front, add to the back, remove from the front, and remove from the back. And in the next video, I'll talk about how we can use this to actually write both the queue and the stack. It'll be pretty interesting. That'll be using what's called the adapter pattern. Yeah, I'll talk about that in the next video.